Hi, you. Welcome to Movie Junk. How are you? I'm good, my friend. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We have a very, very special guest. We have Yul Vasquez joining us today, who fans of Godfather of Harlem know as Jose Miguel Battle. Uh, we've also seen your work on many, many hit shows over the years, Magic City. Uh, you even uh, appeared on The Sopranos, Seinfeld, just recently in Severance and Promised Land, and many, many popular hit films like Bad Boys 2, Captain Phillips, and American Gangster, and many more. I just can't thank you enough for uh, joining us today. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. That that really made me sound good. Uh, um no, man, it's 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 a pleasure. I'm glad we were able to to do this, to carve this time out and do it, man. It's my it's it's my pleasure. I love talking about uh, movies and shit, man. I love that stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, it, it's a happy belated birthday. It was your birthday yesterday. It was. It it, it it was yesterday. Yeah, my birthday was yesterday. Hey, can I can I curse on here? Or I can't. Is that is this? Oh PG? yeah, no, any anything. Yeah, whatever you like. I could, yeah, sometimes I say, like, I'll just say, you know, I have a terrible fucking mouth, man. So, you know, I'm just warning you now. <laughs> I mean, we, we've we've seen your work uh, over the years, right? So, yeah, your character is not uh, hesitant to uh, to curse, right? So we wouldn't ask you to do any different here. No, th you know what? And, and thank you. And um, so your birthday also coincided with uh, St. Patty, uh, Patty's Day weekend. Did you do anything extra special for your birthday or i know uh saint patty's day uh, weekend in new york city i don't know if you know it's, uh, it's like a bloodbath you know i mean oh yeah there's no shortage of irish bars in new york city so it's pretty uh it's intense it's like it's like santa con but uh without you know you know except you know saint patrick something really you know i've guessed worthy of celebrating but Santa is just some kind of nonsense thing to get drunk but no I don't I usually I don't do a lot man I I, I keep it pretty low profile you know if I'm not uh I'm always if I'm, if I'm not working somewhere I'm in the middle of putting together something to go do or painting or I try to keep myself away from the a lot of the shenanigans you know of the world try to stay out of trouble no definitely definitely and I'm as we mentioned, you know, all of your, you know, exciting projects, you know, obviously that you've done and we want to dive into them, but I don't want to do the fans of our show a, a disservice by not, you know, asking you how it all started for you. And if I'm not mistaken, you were born in Cuba, right? Before you made your way here? I was born, yeah. I was born in Cuba. I came to the United States with my mother uh, and my sister uh, and my grandmother when I was like about two and a half, three years old. I grew up in, I grew up in Miami Beach, Florida. Um, they spoke Spanish to me at home and I learned English in school. So, I'm, you know, it's a completely bilingual world, which does something to your brain, actually. It makes you, it wires you differently. But, um, and then, um, you know, I, I had acted as a little kid because my mother was an actress, but uh, I never wanted to be an actor. I, I, I played guitar. I wanted to be a rock star. You know, my, my dream was I wanted to be Jimmy Page. If I'm being honest, I was my hero. I mean, so, um, you know, and and got, and others like him. All my heroes were these these British guitar players, you know. Um, so I wanted to do that, and then I so I played in bands for many many years and made music and made 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 records, and then and and toured and played, and that took me to New York City, and and then that that journey. Uh, I was in a band in New York City. We had just gotten, we had just been dropped by Epic Records. You know, we had done one record with Epic, and uh, you know, and the face of music was changing, and other things were in in vogue. And so we find ourselves without a record deal, and we're trying to shop another deal and writing songs and doing whatnot. And then that in that moment, you know, I, I the singer, the singer's girlfriend. Uh, worked for an agent and uh, she said, Hey, you, you know, my, my, you should come meet my boss. They're, I had very, very long hair. They're, um, they want to cast, they're, they're, they're looking to cast this movie that Oliver Stone is doing about the doors. And, uh, <laughs> and I, 
you know, and I went, I, I met with the lady, you know, and she was very cool. And she, she's a lady that became very, a woman called, a woman by the name of Holly Levitt, who's still in the business and uh, represents, represents actors. Um, and she, she was, said to me, look, you're, I, you're, I don't know if you can act, but you, you seem kind of interesting, <laughs> which is an amazing thing to say. And then she said, I would be your agent, which was, I didn't know at the time, you know, I was a guitar player in a rock band. I was like, okay. I didn't know how difficult it, it was actually to get agents. You know, I mean, I just didn't know. It was absolute, it was absolute, you know, innocence, naivete, you know, I, I, you know. Um, so she becomes my agent. Uh, Holly Levitt becomes my, my agent, becomes a very influential person in my life. And, uh, sends me to this doors audition which I, which i which i don't which i don't get but i meet uh, a casting director there called billy hopkins uh and risa brayman who also become very important people in my life uh and then wind up giving me my my first job which was a film called the mambo kings oh yeah play songs of love and then from there leads us to right now my friend that's amazing. Yeah, that's I mean, that's with, with Armand. And I haven't been in a band since. You, you haven't played played since? I haven't. No, I play. I play every day. I have I have a bunch of guitars and, and all kinds of pedals and everything, but I play all the time. I just haven't been in, in a band gotcha. since. since that's that. amazing. Yeah. Well, well, definitely. I mean, you've been, you know, busy with, with, with projects as well, too. And I, I was going to say, I mean, that's with uh, also Armando Sante, Antonio Banderas. So, I mean, that's a great, you know, first two doors to to open, obviously Mambo Kings, you know, being the one. Um, but uh, I mean, yeah, that was a, a great uh, opportunity and, you know, a, a really, really good, good story to kind of get your, your foot on the door as well. But any, any exciting oh, stories? Oh yeah. Go ahead. I'm super, I'm super grateful. You know, I'm super grateful. Uh, Grateful to Arnie, Arnie Glimsher, the director of the film. Yeah. Who took a shot with me. You have to understand I'm doing so, you know, the Mambo Kings, as you know, is a movie set, I believe in 1952. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going into, I, I read, I auditioned for that film like six times, including for Antonio's part, which they subsequently gave to Antonio, who was, who was in, who was a, an actor from Spain, who was a, a a rising star in in yeah. Spain, and maybe actually already a proper star at that time in in Spain. So, and I was no one; I had no credits. I mean, but Arnie Glimsher, to his credit, you know, kept bringing me back. And I, you understand, I had very long hair. Mm -hmm. I was the complete, the completely wrong look for this film. But Arnie Glimsher, bless him, um, saw something in me. You know what I mean? And kept bringing this crazy rock guitar player back, you know what I mean? And then he, you know, he finally cast me in the movie and, and then I go to LA and they cut all my hair off. Wow. Literally, I was suddenly, I had a haircut from 1952, <laughs> you know, the haircut I needed for the film. So I mean, it was, it was, it was radical, man. It was, you know, uh, you know, people, I get, I ask, I get asked this question a lot because most people know that I have a history in, 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 in music and I, and, and I have a lot of, uh, some of my dearest friends are in, are in, in very big bands, the guys that I've known for years and that are like, literally like brothers to me. Mm -hmm. um, so people, you know, and it's, it's funny, the, just telling it to you now, though, I was I thought I was thinking of Arnie and what what may have been running through Arnie Glimsher's head, because if you had to really like you had to really like have balls and say, man, I, I dig this dude. He's fucking got long hair. I don't know what you know, but he I keep bringing him back. You know what I mean, and uh, and he said to me, he goes, I really like you and I want you in the movie. And so, I mean, it's and which is it's my, it was like my, my first one of my first auditions, you know, what I mean? and then. So I'm, I'm really grateful to Arnie. You know, you know who Arnie Glimsher is. Is Pace Gallery? Uh, he's, yep. he's a he's a gigantic one of the one of the titans of art of the art world. You know what I mean? Legend. His son Mark Glimsher, I believe, now runs the gallery. But yeah, anyways, um, I it's funny. I wish I could. I, w I haven't seen Arnie in a long time. I wish I I wish I could see him now. I'd love to see. I'd love to see Arnie. Anyways. 
I mean, given given that, I mean, this was your first, you know, sort of big break, you know, now that you, you know, landed the role, was there any sort of like pressure, like now I have to actually deliver or, or once you were on, it was just kind of coasting from there. I just, I got this part in the band, you know what I mean? It was like, it was, yeah, there's always pressure to, there's always a certain pressure to, to deliver. Yeah. Yeah. And it was my first job. I was also in acting class. I started taking an acting class. My acting teacher, Bill Esper, another person who influential human in my life, um, was very unhappy that I was going to interrupt this to go do this, this, you know, this Mambo Kings movie. You know? So, I mean, but I had to go, you know, I needed a job. You know I mean, it was like, you know, so I, I, I went, but he was super supportive. And, uh, and then, and I, I finished my training. I kept coming back to to Bill's class and and you know, uh, and finishing my finishing my acting class because um, that was important to me. You know what I mean, I wanted to, I wanted to know what I was doing. I wanted to, I wanted to have technique. You know, I I didn't want to be just uh, an an actor that you know. We always work on instinct, but you know, I wanted to be able to to be able. I wouldn't be able to deliver a performance when when the when the instinct didn't kick in. So I, it was important for me to finish the class, and I finished the class, and and uh, the class was, you know, another thing that happens in the class is that I meet I meet a guy who would become a, a, a one of my greatest friends, a guy called Sam Rockwell, who wound up becoming uh, he was he was the best man at my wedding so you know he's like he became like a brother to me you know and we've known each other for many 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 years so you know my life was 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 turning at that time you know i had i'd come from a rock band you know and i was being formed in another direction you know what i mean and i was i was feeling oddly enough uh, I was happier person uh, in this acting class than I had been in a band, playing in a band for a long time, if I'm being honest. I mean, I think a lot of those last days in, in, in Diving for Pearls were really, really brutal. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a band and the record company has just dropped you, that's a real shit sandwich, my friend. You know what I mean? You're like, because you, you, you're like, what it, you know, we got to start again. We got to yeah. build, you've got to get the deal. We got, you know, it's a whole, so it's like, so yeah, I, it's funny. I, I was thinking about it now as I'm telling you, it's, it's sort of like a different, another person was, was forming a different being. I was building a being of another, of a different current, if you will. I was just going to say that. I mean, you, you're, it was sort of a, a very risky gamble. Obviously it, it paid off. Right. But you're now having to recreate you know, everything that you had built, right? This was your passion, you know, since you were a little kid, but also but it, it led you to this new opportunity, right? And, um, you know, who who knows? Maybe if, if it didn't work after a few years, then maybe, you you know, kind of go back into, into you know, pursuing the uh, the the rock career, but obviously it, it paid off. And I was just going to mention, I mean, one of the, um, you know, in, in Mambo Kings and you know, Armando Sante, I had the privilege of meeting him at the Mob uh, Movie Con, which was also the Sopranos Con as well, too. And we've been fortunate to interview uh, a lot of the uh, the Sopranos cast. And I, I hate myself, I didn't ask, because I mean, you were in an episode, right? But you were, you know, Hesh's, hey. Hesh's longtime friend, you know, you're Ruben, I think it was, uh, was it Ruben, the cute yeah. Ruben, right? And he Ruben, yeah. sort of clashed with each other. And it always felt like there was a little bit more of a backstory. And that, that's how I felt when I watched that episode. But was there more shot or was there more no. potentially or that was it? That was it. No, that was it. That was the, the interesting thing was when that when that came my way, it was a um, it was a scene with all of them. Yep, everybody. It's like everybody's in the, everybody's in that scene. It's it was like I was like wait, like literally everybody's in that scene, and it was one scene, and that was the scene, that was it. And and you could have you would have thought they could have they could have taken this and given you you know shown maybe how Ruben and Hesh had done business or were friends. Obviously, Ruben is a gangster. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, but uh, it was it was that scene. It, that was it. And yeah. I remember it was freezing. We were in this horse farm, I believe was in New Jersey and it was really cold and I was very sick. 
I had, I had a, like a, a horrible flu or something. And, and Jane, and I was very cold and James Gandolfini did something very kind. He had his driver bring his, his car, his SUV, very right by where we were shooting and he put the heat on and said, you'll go sit in my car when we're not shooting, stay warm. And it was like, I didn't, I didn't know him from Adam. I just met him, man, you know? And, and he showed me, he did, it was his fucking kindness. And I, that shit, like it, it, when I think of those moments in my life, the people have done that for me is fucking powerful. Uh, but there, you know, but yeah, it was that scene. It was, and it was, it was fun to do. I mean, uh, I'm, 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 I'm good buddies with um, Imperioli. Oh, cool. So one guy that I, yeah, but, but we, we became friends after that and, 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 and we have the same agent and he's a, you know, he's obviously a, a, a super talent and, a, and um, that goes without saying, I mean, if you just watched him in White Lotus, I mean, he's, he's unbelievable. Oh, amazing. But, great show. What makes him even more more beautiful is that he's a, what a great human that guy is. I mean, what yeah. he's, you know, he's he's lined up internally in the fucking right way. You know what I mean, he's a beautiful guy, man. You know I mean, and I and those folks, you know, there's not there's a few, but there's not not a lot of those guys in my business, you know. <laughs> and, and and also too, you know, you know, being a fortunate. I mean, Sopranos is my all time favorite show, but getting to meet the cast and interview the cast and hearing their yeah. stories and very similar to how you said, just how genuine James Gandolfini was, right? You know, doing you know an act of kindness like that, and maybe you know the fact that you were sick maybe played into your character being more angry. Maybe that brought out a little bit more as well. But yeah, you know, just hearing all these stories about James Gandolfini and you know he's he was. Obviously, he was great as Tony Soprano, but he was like the complete opposite in real person. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, uh, you know, I'd heard of him doing stuff like he did for me numerous times. I mean, I just think he's, you know, man, you know, some people are, are kind, you know, it doesn't cost anything to be kind. You know, I think it's actually more it's more difficult to be a jackass. Yeah. Than to, be, than to be, you know, than to be a good person. Uh, I think it requires more effort uh, to be a jackass. But uh, but he's just that guy, man. You know, I, I, I listen, I never saw I never saw James after that. You I mean, I, I we never crossed paths again. That was it. That was my that was that was our our, our universal intersection, mm -hmm. you know, um, and we were, you know, I don't know what philosophies you subscribe to, but I, you know, for me, that scene with all those guys was supposed to happen. That's like our journeys were all meeting there, that fucking spot. Yeah. You know, Mr. Rico was. I mean, it was crazy. They were all it was the whole. It was crazy. Everybody was there. Everybody's in that scene. You know, and yeah. it's like it's one of those rare times where everybody's in a scene in The Sopranos. Yeah. You know, because you have like you know that you know, but anyways, yeah. I mean. I wish I had gotten to know James better. I I, I really um, admired admired his work uh, tremendously. There was a there's a tiny film he did. Like I forgot the name of it. Way out, I think after Sopranos. Enough said. Yeah, that's it, man. Yep, that's it. That, that's the one that I was thinking of too. It was really good. Everybody, all of your listeners, your viewers that like. James Gandolfini should watch that film. And why? And for her, Julia, Julia Louis Dreyfus is a fucking giant. Yeah. yeah. Giant. And this, uh, this, you know, that's a deep tank, Julia. Everybody thinks, oh, she's funny, you know, but this that this woman is deep, man. Yeah, whenever she does, uh, you know, she switches from comedy to drama, you know, just so seamlessly. Uh, the new uh, she was this was more of a comedy, but the new Jonah Hill movie with uh, Eddie Murphy. She plays Jonah I Hill's mom. It. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, that was that was really funny too. I mean, she her character wasn't she was indirectly being funny. She wasn't trying. I mean, she wasn't trying to be, but it was just hilarious. Uh, just came out on Netflix, and uh, I know this is more of the fan in me asking this. And you know, one of my favorite movies, Bad Boys Two, uh, which you're in, probably the two most quoted lines that I still, you know, even amongst, you know, some of my friends today is the, a couple of grape sodas 
And I, the part where you hit mama, I'm sorry, mama, bah, hit her in the head. Yeah, I mean, I had to punch an old lady, you know. <laughs> but, but she was I trying remember, to kill you guys. She was trying to kill you guys, right? She before. was trying to kill us. But I, I said to Michael Bay, I said, really, I'm going to hit this lady with the back of the rifle? He's like, yeah, she's trying to, she's trying to kill you. I was like, all right, you know. But, uh, you know, she, that lady was beautiful. The the person, the person, when the camera's on me, the person I'm swinging to is a stunt guy with a wig on. So, you know, so there was no chance I was, was going to, okay. there's okay. no chance I was going to injure this, this, this lady, but uh, she's super cool. She was amazing. Yeah. I remember that. I, I remember that. I remember the grape sodas. Uh, um, yeah. They, uh, so I mean, we just had bad boys three, you know, a few years ago and they just yeah. announced bad boys four is there any possibility i mean is your characters still around or would you be open to returning for bad boys four i i i have no idea it would have to be like it would have to be the right thing you know i don't know um i have no idea i'd have to it's a, it's a tough question to answer sure. um We'll, we'll make a uh, we'll make a case to have your your guy both uh, you and your partner uh, return for for bad boys. As Jason Olasabel, yep. Jason Olasabel, my partner is a, 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 again another guy that's been a friend Hilarious. of mine for many years. Beautiful guy, great actor. Yeah, I want I want to jump into the Godfather of Harlem, but one other show, and this is also you know we just recently um, interviewed actually right before the John Sinatiempo, who was in Magic City. Who I love that I show. See. Two two seasons. I I really felt like we needed to get at least one more uh, of that show. But you had you were in fifteen episodes, and uh, I mean this was in Miami. I'm yeah, sorry. we did two seasons. In fact, Mitch Mitch Glazer just texted me. Oddly enough, um, we're bringing it back. The creator of yeah, huh? we're going to bring back Magic City. No, uh, I don't think I don't. I mean I don't think that. But Mitch has. Mitch has another amazing show about Miami um, that is about contemporary time in Miami. That's incredible. Magic City should have should have run five seasons at least. You know what I mean? It, it had it come out at a different time. It was it was you know it was a it came you know it it, it suffered the fate of uh, you know an expensive beautiful show on a network that really no were nobody was kind of watching and powers that be and you know there's all these machinations that happen behind the scenes but mitch mitch could have ran that show for five seasons man you know he had no stories but, but that's mitch's story mitch grew up here miami beach yeah mitch grew up in those hotels that's nobody knows that shit better than him yeah nobody i i re-watched uh both seasons about two years ago again i mean i i love this the show and every episode just with the quality felt like a movie every, each episode was like a movie so yeah. Definitely. I mean, you could see that there was, uh, you know, a good budget, you know, behind the story was was driving. Oh, yeah. At a minimum, it needed one more season at a minimum. We had that we had the, the sets were the most the most gorgeous sets I've ever seen. I mean, they, it was I can't even explain it to you, man. It was like. It was it was perfect. I mean, it was it was like. Uh, it was poised to be like. The Sopranos in Miami. I mean, it should have run. That's yeah. what it should have done. I mean, it, you know, you know, decisions are made in places that I don't even understand how they're made, but they're made. And then, you know, um, it's a, it's a, listen. I I can't tell you how many people stop me and go, Magic City, man. Why, why did that end? And I was like, man, I can't, I can't answer that question. You know what I mean, you know. Um, there, was, there were some rumors of a movie being made a few years after. Was there any? Mitch has, yeah, Mitch or... has a script for a film. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there is a script. Mitch has, Mitch has a film script. Mitch has a film script. But you know, like if if you rebooted that show or or if that show came out today, it'd run. It's a different. The, the landscape is different now. You know what I mean? The landscape is is he, so many streamers now. He could have run that show for for. For, I'm telling you for five seasons. I mean, but you know, it's um, it's he has a he has a, a a new idea that I can't really talk about, but that is incredible, set in contemporary Miami. That is some of the best writing 
it that I've read in a long time. And definitely, I think, in my opinion, some of Mitch's best work. And it's fucking incredible. It's incredible. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully we could see and, it. Uh, I hope you know Jeffrey Jeffrey Dean Morgan's attached to it. And I'm I'm attached to it, but you know, you gotta push that rock, man. You know? Yeah, we we as fans will uh will we'll push it and hopefully we can get it to the words of the you know, either stars or any of the other streaming platforms that uh are gonna be showing it. Um so yeah, we're I'm I've always wanted to see at least sort of like a conclusion because it felt like we needed just a, a like a proper ending for it, but uh, excited for the mm -hmm. new project that uh, that that Mitch has, and hopefully when when you're out when you are able to speak a little bit more about it, we can bring it back for round two for that too. So, sure, man. Yeah, I do. I do want to jump into Godfather of Harlem because of you know I believe you know sure. episode nine is airing today, and then we're following with the finale. I believe next week on so season three is on you know MGM Plus, and you play Jose Miguel Battle, which. Let's see if you can see the, the corporation, um, which is an awesome book. Uh, if uh, if you haven't uh, read it, you know, for fans, I highly recommend it. But you play Jose Miguel Battle. And for me, I mean, I read this book, you know, a few years ago, and that's when I was first introduced to to Jose. And if you're familiar with the Bay yeah. of Pigs invasion, um, you know, he was one of the individuals that was, yep, that was caught, was sent back and, you know, eventually, you know, made his way to Union City. He was essentially a godfather amongst the, like he was a godfather, right? With the Cubans, worked with the mafia and the Bolita. And so definitely, I mean, I, I highly recommend because we're, I think this is the first time where we're really seeing his character in depth on screen, at least for, for this amount of time. But um, what's it like, you know, playing Jose? And was there any research that you had to do before taking the part? I I had, I, I'd read the book. I read the book when it came out, you know, I knew, I knew battle was um, from Belita. You just, you know, Cuban, you, you knew about this dude, you know, you know, he's from a different time than me, but he was, a, you know, he was a, uh, uh, a mythical kind of, uh, being, than life, you know, than life kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so when the corporation came out, I, I, um, I read it and I loved it. Uh, and, you know, I knew there was a film that Benicio Del Toro was trying to do and all that was going on. And I didn't know what was happening with it. And and then a lot, you know, years pass since the book comes out. And uh, I get uh, Michael Paynes, who's one of the producers and writers, Godfather of Harlem, is a guy I've known for many, many years. Uh, and I've known Chris Brancato, you know, we be, we become more friends since I started working with him on Godfather of Harlem, but I knew, I'd, I'd met him and I knew him, you know, and he's a good dude and uh, and I knew his work, obviously. Uh, so they, they called and asked if I wanted to play battle, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I, I almost literally thought they were fucking kidding, you know? And I was like, uh, because nobody had played this guy. Nobody, we we hadn't seen anybody portray this guy on any screen. I, I didn't no. even think the world really knows who the hell Battle is. Hmm. You know, um, I mean, they do now and they will. Um, but so, you know I mean, I, there's no way I could say no to this, you know? So, yeah, that's what we did. We did it. And I had, I had, you know, and I've told them this, one of the greatest times I've ever had making a television show, playing battle with, with, uh, and, you know, and working with Forrest, who I, I mean, is one of the greatest actors I've ever had the pleasure of sitting across from. Uh, I mean, just, and I truly mean that. I mean, there, you look into his eyes, that guy's there, man. He's there, he's there, and he's, so we went and did it and I had, I had a great time and, um, it's it's a great ride. Yeah, I mean, this is I mean, this is season three. And I'm not just saying this because, you know, I have you on. I definitely feel like this is the best season yet. Um, there's just a lot of air of, you know, sort of what's looming with the CIA. And this specific story has always been really interesting to me because you read the book and you get so many details like books and, and like the Godfather book. There's just more details in the book than you get 
in the movie. So like for me, I was excited yeah. to finally see this character and, you know, sort of everything that I was sort of introduced from, you know, research and in the book as well. And you definitely um, brought, you know, bring the character justice and sort of how I envisioned him to be as well. And uh, I also can't uh, not mention that uh, Gabriel Rodriguez, G-Rod, who I know him as, has been on our show three or four. Yeah, yeah. He's part of your crew. I was like, oh man, this yeah, is he's awesome. part of my crew, man. No, he's a he's a he's a beautiful guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. G-Rod. I, just, <laughs> I love I, that guy. So the last the last time we had him on, I was telling him because I've had him on maybe three or four times, right? And the first time I saw him was on Cobra Kai. But then when we brought him back on the last time, I was like, you know, every time I'm watching TV. I'm seeing you on screen. You're always on TV now. And he's like, man, I'm, you know, he was really blessed and excited. So when I saw him on Godfather of Harlem and then seeing him in your crew, I was like, man, that's, that's a perfect fit. No, it's good, man. He's a great guy. He's great. He was great in it. He's great in the show. And he, again, when he's a beautiful dude, you know? Um, yeah, no, I, I love that guy. We're, we're, we're obviously we're, I met him on the show. We're friends, but we yeah. we're friends on Instagram. Yeah, you know, cool. And, I mean, I got listen. I've been very fortunate, man. I've 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 been surrounded by by really great people. You know, I I, I you know, I try to uh, I try to do the same for others. You know, and I know you can't obviously say much or spoil much, but what can fans expect with the final two episodes? Mayhem, mayhem. <laughs> yeah, Take man, it. I can't. Take I, it. I, I can't really. I can, yeah. I, I obviously I can't. Really, I can't say it because uh, you know I'm. Um, I'm. Uh, I would be sued. Uh, but uh, uh, it'll be. You know, I would just say strap in. Yep. yep it's it's going to get spicy. I can't. Can't wait. Can't wait. And also, <laughs> I, I. I definitely want to um, also um, ask. You know, are you able to share some of your upcoming projects uh, that we could see? I know we have the last the episodes of Godfather of Harlem, but anything else that you could share with some of your upcoming works? I have a, I have a show called White House Plumbers that is on HBO. The da David Mandel, who you probably know from Seinfeld and Veep and, and many other things, uh, directed. Uh, Peter, Peter Hayek and Alex Gregory wrote it, and um, it's about Watergate. And it stars Woody Harrelson and Justin Thoreau. So that it's a, that's a that's a limited five part, and that will be coming out in May. Awesome. And and uh, and I'm I'm gonna go do something in May that it, it you know hasn't really been announced. I mean, it's, part of it's been announced, but it's a it's a new show that Chris Brancato. Uh, and Michael Payne's uh, have um, that's going to be it's it's going to be something it's going to be crazy yeah so no well again like I said I always like to leave some room for uh, for round two so when we get some more announcements and also to you know definitely after the conclusion of uh, of godfather of harlem we definitely want to set up uh some round two you know hopefully later on in the summer and you'll want to be respectful of your time i mean this was a blast getting to talk movie shop with you about all these exciting projects i've been a long time fan and i'm really excited and also to share with the fans you know your journey and just can't thank you enough for uh for joining the show today thank you so much thank you man and i appreciate i appreciate the love and the support man i uh um and i can't I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. Happy belated birthday, and hopefully enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks, man. Talk to you soon. See you too. Bye-bye.